Yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of the, you know, audience that is familiar with myeloma, probably this sounds a lot of something they've already heard and seen, but I kind of reinforces their, you know, knowledge. I think that is good. For some who are maybe less, you know, versed in myeloma, then they will be, you know, now aware that there are new classes of drugs, new targeted, you know, therapies that are available, you know, CAR T cell therapies that are also an option for patients. And, um, you know, hopefully there is enough there to pique their interest, to want to, you know, read more, educate themselves more about it. In a 45 minute, I don't think we can give it justice and kind of convey all this expertise. But I think, you know, if, you know, you kind of get, you know, a few points that are new things, you can read about them. What are the things I'm most interested to know about? And, and then maybe it takes one or two patients in your practice to make you want to kind of go and, you know, read and ask a question and so forth. Yeah, I agree. And also hopefully the supportive care. Uh, component, they've learned something as well. You know, which medications you want to do antivirals, prophylactic stuff. Um, other ones, you got to uh, realize there's thrombolic events. So just depending, I hope they got a lot of the supportive care. Because like you said, a lot of the communities, they don't see a lot of myeloma. So I think um, overall also seeing how much it's changed and it's going to change. So I think oncology, we always think about the next step, next step. So it's kind of exciting to see there's, there's lots of options now for patients and they're living longer. Yeah, we've come a long way and uh, for a lot of patients it's a chronic illness now but mm -hmm. I think uh, the next step really is that we have a lot of the tools that you know we probably need to make it you know, to kind of reach functional cures in a greater number of patients and hopefully maybe actual cures in a number of patients. Uh, that ultimately is still, you know, the price. This is still what we're looking for, uh, for our patients. Yeah, and, the, and we've got to always realize it's a chronic illness. So quality of life is important. I think our new therapies aren't as toxic as what they were years ago. So that's nice for our patients to look forward to. Very, a lot of uh, room to be optimistic as well. No, I think it's exciting times. Yeah. Obviously, I don't recall there was a time where there was more optimism, at yeah. least in the myeloma field from, you know, the, the whole, um, you know, medical community. I think um, it's exciting times. There's obviously still, a, you know, when there are newer therapies, there's a lot of unanswered questions. But so we have, you know, a lot of work cut out for us. Yeah, I agree. And um, I often like when we see newly diagnosed patients, um, let them know that we really don't know overall survival data because we have all these new drugs. So the more you have in your arsenal, the hope is the longer they survive. And it's definitely more of a chronic illness. I still think we have a lot of work to do with the uh, high risk and ultra high risk patients. Mm -hmm.